Hey everyone, welcome to my talk, Automated Security Testing with OWASP Net Tucker. My name is Sam Stepanian, you can find me on Twitter at SecureStep9. I flew here all the way from London, England. Um, I'm OWASP London chapter leader. I'm also an OWASP Net Tucker project leader or co-leader of OWASP Net Tucker project. Now, by the show of hands, how many of you heard about the movie transfer vulnerability? Everyone, right? This is absolutely massive and I believe, uh, well, according to the TechCrunch article, over 60 million people got affected. And for those of you who don't know, movie transfer is a file transfer utility, which is installed by many organizations to securely transfer files in order for people not to use email. So they would just use this uh, managed file transfer service, uh, a website that people can log in. And usually movie transfer was used for documents such as payroll, for example, your company is paying the employees through a third party payroll service. So they would provide list of all their employees with all their personal details, with all their bank details. Um, and um, a lot of companies would use it to transfer any le legal documentation or technical documentation. There are companies who use movie transfer to even exchange penetration testing results. So that is <laughs> very interesting. And of course, for those of you who don't know, they had the Number one OWASP vulnerability in movie transfer that was SQL injection that was leading to remote code execution. And the number of people affected is just mind blowing. So if you have to deal with this vulnerability, you will appreciate this talk. And there was another very big vulnerability which is making headlines right now, this week and past week. There was a, a Citrix, uh, there are actually two Citrix vulnerability. There was a Citrix bleed vulnerability, which was, uh, um, making uh, headlines last week, and also the uh, previous vulnerability, the remote code execution, which was um, published back in July. So that was another very big one. And both these vulnerabilities uh, allowed attackers to break into the networks, which were protected by Citrix appliances, and there was a lot of big corporations who use Citrix as their VPN service. So this is very, very big. And now the problem is a lot of big companies, they would use Citrix uh, VPN devices all over the world. They would use some in Singapore, some in the United States, some in Europe, uh, because obviously they want to keep them local. And the problem is now everyone needs to fix it. And the question is how do they know how many of these vulnerable devices or the vulnerable services they have and where are they? So that is a very big question. And of course, so those of you who had to deal with log4j, right? You probably had the same problems, like where do I have log4j? So <laughs> you're gonna appreciate this talk because uh, I'll show you how OWASP has a project which can help you to address this challenge. So very quickly, so again, my name is Sam Stepanian. I'm SecureStep9 on Twitter. I'm an ex-developer myself, so, and I've been leading OWASP London chapter since 2015. Um, I moved to application security space in 2005, and I'm an independent application security consultant and architect. I work in the financial services organizations in the city of London. So I am a defender. So why am I presenting a talk about consists of words network and attacker if I'm an application defender, right? <laughs> um, so there's a reason for that because um, I first tried NetTucker in 2017. I have a bit of a story. I saw it appearing on a list of OWASP projects and I'm like, okay, let me try this thing. So I tried to run it. It displayed a whole list of things like vulnerabilities. And I was like, I don't really understand what it is. I don't know how to use it. So I tried to running it by double clicking on it or just launching it. Um, and because the list of options was so big, I didn't bother reading it. So I forgot about it for a year. But little did I know in 2018, I had to um, work with NetHacker again because out of the blue, um, myself and Dr. Greg Frakos, uh, OWASP London chapter co-leader at the time, we received an email from OWASP NetHacker project leaders and they're saying, hello people from OWASP London, you're in London, right? Uh, there is a Black Hat Europe conference in London um, and uh, we were supposed to come and present OWAS Netucker in the Arsenal track of uh, Black Hat Europe in London, but because London is not an EU country anymore, we cannot do this because our visa is still stuck in the embassy, so we're not gonna make it. Can you please go and present this project instead of us? And we're like, yes, we would like to help out, but we have no idea what this project is about. And I said, that's fine. 
let's get on a Zoom call, and they demoed the project to us. And Dr. Greg Frackles and I was like, oh my God, this is like the best thing since sliced bread. We're so demoing it. So we said, okay, let's go to Black Hat and demo it. And then this happened. <laughs> Look how many people are watching the demo. Right? It was just unbelievable. Everybody loved the tool. So we said, okay, that's great. So I became a co-leader of the Netaka project as well. We started making some changes. And then we said, okay, let's present it the year after in 2019. And then even bigger crowds <laughs> gathered watching the demo. And I'm not sure if, uh, oh, there's lots of vendors out there today, but I don't think anyone has a crowd like that watching the demo. So that was really impressive. So why is everyone watching the demo? Uh, there's another interesting fact about Netaka that you probably don't know. OWASP Netaka is currently the top sixth project of OWASP on GitHub. So if you go to the um, uh, OWASP organization on GitHub, number one is Cheat Sheet Series, number two is uh, Mobile STG, number three is uh, WSTG, number four is uh, Go Secure Coding Practices, number five is OWASP Top 10, interestingly, and number six is Netaka, and you know nothing about this. It's the top six most start OWASP repo on GitHub. So what is it and why people love it? And I hope you will love it as well. It is actually an open source project, just like all OWASP projects. And the idea of it was that it is a framework to assist with penetration testing and information gathering of vulnerability scanning tasks. And the whole idea was built to be automated. And because it's written in Python, you can run it on anything. You can run it on Windows, on Linux, on Mac OS. I even managed to run it on Raspberry Pi, and it worked perfectly. So you can run it on absolutely anything, this little scanner. Another uh, quick disclaimer to say that it was actually developed by students who participated in Google Summer of Code initiatives. And if you don't know what Google Summer of Code initiative is, it is a program run by Google every summer. And the idea is that students can get to work on open source project of their choice during the summer break and get paid by Google. So lots of open source organizations participate and that includes OWASP as well. So if there are any students in the audience or you know of a student, right, please tell them because every March they start accepting applications and students can work on anything. You can work on OWASP Top 10, you can work on Juicio, but you can also work on NetHacker. So, um, NetTucker is a bit of a Swiss army knife kind of tool. So it's a tool consisting of many tools, not necessarily compatible with each other, but can they all be used together? Can you pull multiple blades from your Swiss army knife? That's the beauty of NetTucker. So just like Swiss army knife, it, uh, it's a collection of tools um, bundled in modules. It is very easy to create your own modules because they are not in programming language, they're written in YAML, which is making it quite easy to define uh, uh, the uh, modules. It is fast performance, so a uh, fast performing tool because it's using Python's multi-threading and it is actually not as, well, I'll mention it later when I compare it with Nmap on the performance. It's actually very gentle to your networks. It has customizable profiles, which are basically bundles of modules that you can focus on a specific task. There are some pre-built profiles, but you can create your own modules and say, okay, I'm doing, doing this penetration test. This is my own profile, which is very handy. But of course, the most important thing about NetHacker is that you can automate it and run it from the command line, from a uh, cron job, scheduled cron job, or you can use GitHub Action or your favorite pipeline tool. I will later show you how I run it in GitHub uh, uh, pipeline. So. Why OWASP NetHacker? It is not an officially released project yet, so we are not in version one, we're version 0.3.2, which is released today, by the way, latest version. We're always looking for more contributors. If you know Python programming language and you are into penetration testing, automated recon or bug bounty, please do help us build this project. What is cool about this tool is that it has both command line interface, it has a web UI, it has an API, and it, unlike other tools, it has a built-in database. So it keeps the results of all the scans inside, which is very useful. Uh, it has a report generator. It also uses Multigo transforms. For people who know what Multigo is, it's an awesome uh, investigation tool built into Kali Linux. And currently it has over 80 modules. So for you to understand, this is the most frequently asked question. Say, okay, not another vulnerability scanner. What does it do and how does it compare to the things that we actually use? Okay, so if you look at these scanners such as Burp Suite or Zap, right? So what Burp Suite or Zap do, they scan one website, 
for many web application vulnerabilities, whatever the scanner is able to find. So it will actually crawl just one website and try to find all the URLs, all the buttons, all the forms. So it's also known as a DAS, so it's a DAS scan. So it only scans one website, tries to find all vulnerabilities in one place. OWASP attacker is different. It can scan one website, but the whole idea it can scan one or many, and that could be hundreds or thousands of IP addresses, networks, or subdomains, and what is it scanning them for? For open ports, or one or more specific vulnerabilities, which are defined by the user. And of course, you can bundle them in modules, say, okay, I want to pull multiple blades out of my Swiss Army knife and use them uh, together, and an added bonus, it has a brute forcing module, which, other, uh, which is a very, very cool thing. So where do you find NetHacker? It's under owasp.org slash NetHacker. That's the easy URL to go and find it and download and use it. It is documented. Uh, documentation can be found under the wiki button in GitHub. There are installation instructions here. Um, so you just need to go to wiki and click on the installation instruction over there on the right. I'm not gonna go over how to install it. It's a Python-based uh, application. But for those of you who want to use it from Kali Linux, I use it from Kali Linux. I recorded a little YouTube video that you can use and to understand how to install NetHacker in Kali Linux. So that's there. Also, of course, NetHacker also comes as a Docker container. And you can download the container image from official OWASP Docker Hub. So if you go to dockerhub.com slash OWASP slash NetHacker, you can download it. You see almost uh, three and a half thousand uh, organizations already downloaded and using it. And there's one more place where you can find NetHacker. It, it is actually included in Black Arch Linux penetration testing distribution. So those of you who are in pen testing, there's a Black Arch Linux um, uh, distribution and uh, OWASP is bundled in there. So remember when I first launched NetHacker and couldn't understand what it does, right? So it's actually quite simple, and this is what it is. It has three types of modules. Module of a type scan, so it can scan for something. For example, it can scan for ports, right? Open ports, so it's a port scanner. Or it can scan, for example, for all versions of WordPress on your network, it can do that as well. It also has modules of type vuln or vulnerability scanning modules. So these are modules specifically looking for a vulnerability. And it has a module of type brute or brute forcing module. For example, SSH brute forcing, which will perform brute forcing over SSH protocol. Now there are lots of lots of scan modules and vulnerability modules. I'm not gonna go over them, but I will just cover some of them so you have idea what it can do. For example, an admin scan module can scan your network and find any applications which have exposed administrative consoles, which is very important, right? Because a lot of people leave them out there uh, unprotected. It can also scan for all the uh, di directories. So it can for directory uh, brute forcing, right? So something like people familiar with something like Dearbuster or GoBuster. It can detect all content management systems which are running on your network. It can also perform subdomain scan, and subdomain scan is another very important module that we have. So, uh, and of course, there's a port scan, there's a P PMA scan, stands for PHP My Admin. PHP My Admin is a very popular tool for administering MySQL uh, uh, databases. And again, there are a lot of people are leaving it on the websites, and they forget to configure the password, so they leave the default configuration. And yeah, Nataka can help you find all the instances of it. Um, there are lots of vulnerability scanning modules, so I'm not gonna go over them, but uh, the list is constantly growing and we need more contributions. If you can provide your own module, it would be great. Obviously, I started my talk uh, with Move It Transfer and um, Citrix vulnerabilities. These modules are available. Um, and of course, we have brute forcing modules. So what makes an attacker different from all other scanners? Because it can do brute force. So you can brute force over FTP, HTTP basic auth, HTTP form. HTTP form is your usual form on a web page. Log in with your username and password, click submit, right? That's HTTP form. It can brute force that. It can use NTLM, it can use SMTP, SSH, Telnet. There's still a lot of devices out there using Telnet. And it can also use WordPress XML RPC. So it can brute force its way into WordPress installations. 
Now, why is brute forcing important? Because when an attacker was originally created, it was called IoT scan. So it was supposed to scan your network for Internet of Things devices, scan IoT devices for any open ports, and then try to brute force scan for default credentials, such as admin, admin. And I actually used it in one of the financial services organizations in London because it was a large bank and they had lots of cameras inside the building. And they said, okay, we have lots of cameras, but we know some of them, we forgot to change the default password. But we don't know which ones. I said, okay, let me run the attacker. What's the IP range? They gave it to me and said, okay, these are all the cameras which are accessible as admin, admin. So that's the use case straight away. So of course, because we're talking about uh, NetTucker, it is an offensive security tool, so you have to remember that it's very easy to abuse it intentionally or accidentally. Please do not use it to scan websites or to scan networks for which you do not have a permission because do not you, you of course, legal disclaimer, you need a permission before you scan anything for vulnerabilities. Now, um, I'm going to talk about very quickly about NetTucker port scanner module because uh, of course, a lot of people know about Nmap. Do you know about Nmap? Anyone uses Nmap? Great. So I use the Nmap as well, but people have kind of love and hate relationship with Nmap, and the reason is that it's quite a clunky tool, really, because you have to remember a lot of options, and it is really heavy on your network. And I remember there were some of the network switches manufactured in a far east, which couldn't withstand the, uh, no, ne <laughs> the Nmap scans. And basically, no one could do anything when someone was running an Nmap scan. So uh, Netaka has a built-in port scan, which is very easy to use. You just say port scan, and you can define the, uh, what you want to scan. And you can limit it, which is very good, to specific ports. So for example, if you add dash G parameter and say, I only want to scan ports 80 and 443, it will do it for you. By default, it will use the same 1,000 ports as Nmap. So uh, that's quite easy. So how do you run NetHacker, right? So this was my dilemma when I started working with NetHacker. It's like, okay, how do I use this thing? So the thing is NetHacker needs two parameters. Parameter number one is the target. So you have to provide it on the command at dash I, what do you want to scan? And dash M, you have to define the module. What do you, which module do you want to scan it with? So if you want to scan just one IP address, let's say 192.168.1.149, Okay, that will do a port scan of just one IP address, but you can scan the whole network, and this is what's great about it. You can just define the range. And this is what's great about NetHacker. It attacks networks, that's in the name. So it can scan a single IP address. It can scan a range of IP addresses if you give it the start IP and the end IP. It can also scan the network using the CIDR notation, so you can just say slash 24, it will scan your slash 24 network or slash 16 network, whatever. It can also scan a, all subdomains of a defined domain, for example, owas.org, and I will use owas.org in a demo because I'm allowed to scan it because it has a bug bounty policy. And Casey Ellis, the head of the bug crowd, was here in the previous talk. So uh, we allow security researchers to perform scans on OWASP.org. And you can also give it a URL, and URL can be an HTTP or an HTTPS, HTTPS format. So you can see it's a quite an unusual scanner. It takes a variety of inputs, but that's not it, because obviously you can also give it a file with all the targets, because if you're a large organization, you will own several domain names, you will have lots of networks, right? And there will be lots of ranges, and yeah, how do you scan them all in one go, right? You just create a text file, you will put everything in your organization in that file. So, for example, we own OWASP.org, we own OWASP.com, and this is the IP address range. You put it in a text file, load it from the text file, scans everything. So, that is the beauty of it. And then, remember when I was talking about the Swiss Army knife analogy, you can actually chain the module. So you can use multiple modules. You can just use a comma and say, okay, I want to do a port scan. I want to do a uh, PHP my admin scan. I want to do an HTTP status scan. And I want to check for the uh, strats vulnerability all in one go. And you can do that. And this is what's great about it. So for example, in this example, you can do the port scan and server version vuln scan uh, limited to port 18.443 in one, one go. And this is kind of the hidden gem of NetHacker because it allows you to run any module on subdomains, which is great. So for example, owas.com or owas.org says, go and find all the subdomains and scan it with 
predefined module. You can perform a port scan, you can perform a vulnerability scan, you can perform an, an HTTP status scan, you can do whatever you want on all the subdomains. Of course, the subdomain um, uh, recon is not as good as another project, OWASP AMAS, and you can actually use it with OWASP AMAS. So you can first get, discover all the subdomains with AMAS and then feed them into an attacker, but there's a built-in service which finds subdomains and it is customizable as well. So you can basically create your own source of subdomains. And of course it has profiles, so you can actually bundle it and say, okay, not only I want to scan a specific list of targets, this is a predefined list of uh, scans and vulnerabilities that I want to find in uh, my network. So let me try to do live demo. Right, let's pray to the gods of live demos. I like doing my live demos. So I have a Kali Linux running here, right? And this is, first of all, I will try to run NetHacker with absolutely nothing. And you can see it starts, it starts loading the modules and then it will start spitting out all its usage instructions. So there's lots and lots of text here, right? This is what got me uh, really, you know, puzzled. It's like, how do I use this thing? But let me show you how we can scan OWASP.org and perform a port scan just on OWASP.org. So I just define dash M port scan and say, okay, do the port scan only on ports 80 and 443, right? So, and you, you can see OWASP.org, it used it as a one website. So we do indeed have OWASP.org. That's our website and says, yep, port 80 and 443 detected. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add dash S parameter and that will tell NetHacker, go and discover all subdomains of OWASP.org and then run the module that we defined, which was port scanner in this case, and port scan every single subdomain of OWASP.org. So you can see the value. You can see it's already doing this. You can see it's doing the uh, discovery first. And then at the end, it gives us the results. There you go. This is all the subdomains of OWASP.org, which have been port scanned for port 18.443. So this is one of the great advantages of NetHacker. But let me show you something else. I will probably need to switch to another version of NetHacker here. But you can also add more um, modules. Let me see if I can make the font here a little bit bigger in this window, because it's a bit too small. All right, 18 should do it, okay? Right, in this window, I had several modules chained. So I have, I'm scanning OWASP.org, scanning with server version vulnerability. So server version vulnerability is the server banner leakage vulnerability because a lot of web servers, when they send the response back to the browser, there's a header called server and they leak what they are, right? I'm an IIS, I'm an Apache, I'm Nginx, right? And why is it bad? Because if the server version is leaked as well, that means the attacker can figure out, oh, you're running, I don't know, Apache version 221, it has like one zillion CVEs, which are all critical. I know how to attack you now, right? So it's a problem. Same thing with X powered by. So X powered by is a header, which is injected by a lot of frameworks. For example, like PHP or .NET that says, hey, this website is running PHP version five, or this website is running IIS version seven. It's like, okay, now we know how to exploit this thing because you know uh, it's uh, making the homework easy for attackers. So. I'm going to try to live demo this. So scan OWASP.org subdomains for server version vulnerability, X powered by vulnerability, and perform a port scan. And the port scan will include ports 22, 80, and 443. Right? So you can see this is, I'm using the previous version of NetHacker for a reason, because it has a better version of graph generator, which I will show you in a minute. You can see this version has slightly less modules, but that's okay, because we are working on bringing the same modules into the uh, uh, version three of NetHack as well. So you can see what it's doing. So now it's found all the subdomains, and it goes through every single subdomain of OS.org, and it's doing a port scan for three ports, 22, 80, and 443. It is checking if any of the targets, right, any of the subdomains discovered are leaking the server version in the response header, and whether they're leaking the X powered by. So, and after this is finished, you will see, of course, it will show the, the results in the table. And you will see something else that I will show you, which is very interesting. You, you can see it's going through all of them. 
I think we only have a couple of them left. You can see the TCP connects happening for the port scans. You can see some of them saying, oh, there's a vulnerability server version disclosure in headers, right? And uh, I think we have videos, we have dev. Uh, there's another interesting subdomain. I need to ask Harold what that subdomain is still doing there. And we have uh, discourse, which I think is discontinued. Contact.oasp.org, very interesting. Okay, that's the main way to contact us. And the main one, there you go, it's done. So you can see it provided the results in the text table, but this is not w what's good, okay? There's a good thing, of course, that there's a result, but it, it saved the result in the database, and it also it saved the result in this HTML file, you see here? So the result is sto stored in this HTML file, and also in the database. So let me have a look at this HTML file. Because it's HTML, I have Firefox here in my Kali Linux. So I'm gonna open it with Firefox. Oops, I have to spell Firefox. <laughs> Not Firefox, sorry, Firefox. Right, okay, and let's wait for a second. And here you see the amazing feature of OWASN attacker, so-called penetration testing graph. So you can see all the scans that we've done, these are all the subdomains, so it started the attack, and it basically started attacking all the subdomains, and we can see all the ver server version being leaked, and we can see all the port scans being performed here. And what is very interesting here, and this is why I want to show you this graph, you see there's something interesting here in the middle, because all these have like two forks, and there's one here, port scanner has three forks. You see why? because there's one subdomain here, right? Do you see this? There's one subdomain, dsomowas.org, which is the only subdomain of OWAS which has port 22 open. So visually I can very quickly see where is the, where is the problem, right? There's one, one service in our network which is uh, open on port 22. And of course the same table is available, okay? So NAT is there. And of course, the another cool thing, I will have to return back to my slides, is that I can also download the results in JSON format, so, so you've seen the graph, and also in CSV. And the cool thing about CSVs, what is CSV? CSV is a spreadsheet. So <laughs> we have a tool which is a manager's dream, right? So how many of you wish that they had a tool which they can push a button and it scans their network and gives them an Excel spreadsheet. In that spreadsheet, they have a list of all the subdomains, all the open ports on every single server in the network, showing what is running on every single server. Uh, and it's in a spreadsheet, which you can filter, you can search, and you can have it in your desktop. This is exactly what this tool allows you to do. And this is why it is so cool. So this is not, well, obviously, one of the reasons why we're doing this, of course, you understand, because it can also perform an inventory of your whole network. And why is asset inventory is important? I am bringing in this tweet from Jeremiah Grossman back from 2017. When we were working on OWAS Top 10 2017, Jeremiah Grossman was our legend and veteran of application security, the guy who created uh, White Hat. Uh, he tweeted and said, I suggest that OWASP Top 10 2017 includes A0, asset inventory, because these days the biggest AppSec risk are websites that you don't know that you own. Right? That's all the shadow IT. And of course, if you don't know what you own, you cannot possibly secure it. So that is what is great. So of course, I just showed it to you manually, but you can automate it. And I built a uh, sample project uh, in my GitHub where I automate this whole thing. And the way I have done it, I created a GitHub action, which is doing exactly what I just showed you. It goes and scans OWASP.org every day for all the uh, um, vulnerabilities, all the subdomains, all the open ports, and it puts it into a CSV file. Let me see if I can demo this to you now. So we will have to open GitHub.com. Yeah, and I have to go to my repo. Here, and this is my NetHacker automation repo. Right, it's very, very simple. You can see there is a, a, a if, oh, let me open the actions here. So I have three actions. I have a full web text scan of OWASP.org. I have the NetHacker scan and I have port 22 on the scan. So this is running every night. And you can see here, 
uh, it just ran last night and is a uh, result file, the artifact, which is our report. And I can just open it up here. CSV file with my favorite spreadsheet tool, which is LibreOffice on my laptop. And I click OK. And there you go. I have a spreadsheet of, I'll just get rid of the Unix scan ID because it's just a GUID. And there you go. You can see I have a spreadsheet with all the assets on OWASP.org. And of course, if it was your organization, you can use it on your organization. I'm not allowed to scan your company. You go ahead and you scan your company. You can see there's all the open ports. And of course, because it's a spreadsheet, I can now filter it by data and say, hmm, I remember there was somewhere an Nginx. Where, w w what has Nginx? So straight away, I can see which subdomains of OWASP.org are running Nginx and which version, because some of them are actually leaking that's Nginx 125.3. See, so this is what is so cool about it. So yeah, you can automate it, run it, the action is available. If I go back to my slide, you can take a picture of this QR code, it just takes you to this repo. And you can see how easy it is to schedule and run it. But of, of course, what I showed you here, I was running what we called an external scan. So from outside of our organization, I'm scanning all the externally visible assets. But you can run it inside your network. That is what the beauty of it, because it's just written in Python. You can just run it inside. And because it also has another cool feature, that you can use. It has a web UI and API. So I have no time to demo the web UI, but this is what it looks like. And it is basically allows you to Google or to search all your internal servers, all the open ports on them, and all the vulnerabilities. You can just install it and run it on some box or just spin up a VM somewhere on the network and just use it uh, as a web server. Right? And, uh, um, Instead of doing it in GitHub Actions, you have it with a web UI, which is great. Um, now, going back to the, some useful vulnerabilities that you can find with it, if you're suffering from moving, right, we have a move it version scan, and you can see I scanned a company, which is a customer of mine, and they didn't even know that they have multiple versions of move it. They thought there's only one, but I found four instances of move it, and they all had different versions. And uh, of course, there was one of them, which is highlighted, which is vulnerable because it's running versus, version 12.1. So there you go. This is, then this scan took minutes. I scanned about 40,000 IP addresses within this organization, and it came back saying, oh, yeah, actually, there's, I found some of it, um, uh, so, uh, software in there, and this is the version. So there you go. That's Ned Tucker. Um, just like all of us projects, we are looking for contributors. If you wish to contribute, please read the developer guidelines. Uh, uh, which are inside the uh, GitHub repo. We are always welcome new contributions, especially new modules. So just to summarize, the key takeaways. So OWASP Attacker is a free network scanning tool. And what it allows you to do, it allows you to perform asset discovery, internal or external. Some people call, call it attack surface management or external attack surface management tool. You can scan your network and all your subdomains for servers, open ports, Technologies, what are they? They're running IIS, they're running PHP, they're running Ruby, they're running .NET, whatever it is. You can scan your network for default credentials, how many boxes with username admin and password admin you have on your network, right? Use this tool to find out. And of course, there are, for example, Cisco devices which have different default credentials. You can just def define them. NetTucker comes with a pre-built dictionary of uh, the most used and abused passwords that you can use as well for um, uh, brute forcing, but again, you can provide it with your own dictionary, especially if you know that some of your, your passwords were leaked, right? If you service like, have I been pwned? You can just feed it into the dictionary and use the attacker to scan your network, see how many of your web applications uh, have these credentials. You can scan your network for a specific vulnerability, and this is what's great. You can find instances of Log4j, Microsoft Exchange, Proxy Shell Logon, Citrix vulnerabilities, Movie Transfer, scan everything for one vulnerability. When Microsoft Exchange had the proxy shell vulnerability, if you remember that, the big Chinese hack, and almost every single company in the world was uh, vulnerable, and it was really, really bad, I had a thank you letter 
from a government of a small European country. I'm not allowed to disclose which country it was. I can only say it was a small European country. And I said, oh, thank you, OWASP and attacker leaders, because we use this tool to scan the IP ranges of our entire country and then found all the instances of vulnerable exchange servers using OWASP and attacker tool. And there's one other case which I don't have time to cover, but you can, for example, do things like you can discover expired SSL certificates on your service in your network as well. So you can use the NetHacker not just as an attacker, you can use it as a defender or as a bug bounty hunter. So this is it. Thank you very much. Use NetHacker to attack your own network before the real attackers do. <laughs> do we have time for questions? We've got plenty of time. Excellent. Right. Yeah, we've got uh, 10 minutes. Excellent. Uh, I'll give you the microphone. If you could pass it, that would be great. Uh, Is there a button to push at the bottom, probably, at the side? Uh, you mentioned that it stores information in an internal database. Um, I'm guessing that's SQL Lite. That's probably. correct. You can set it up to work with Postgres in your enterprise. Do you have any um, plans to? Uh, integrate or is there a module already that'll kind of give you who is registration information like who who you know who's registered to that domain because uh, you're trying to find domains yeah so we have plans to do it yeah we can do it as well yeah same thing with ip info to find out who the ip address belongs to yes correct yeah that, that's the in there already uh it's it's coming then yeah uh, no the ip based who is is already there okay the domain based is not there yet but it's in the plans yeah okay great thank you Uh, oh, uh, I was going to ask, so do the modules make use of the database when you're running them? As an example, if you're running a port scan and a module that only applies to an HTTP or an HTTPS port, is it intelligent enough to not try to reach out to HTTP, HTTPS ports that are not open based on the port scan? Very good question. Not yet, but it will do in the future because we are working on the workflow feature. So it can actually, if it's already in the database, you can say, use the results of previous scan. Thank you. Oh, more questions. Uh, building on the previous question, it would be very cool to be able to just pipe the output, <coughs> the output of net attacker into another net attacker. And then exactly, but that's more. not what you know, because we, you currently chain modules with a comma and say I use port scan, then I use the server version scan. So at the moment, the comma just says, well, I'm going to launch all the modules and they all uh, run concurrently. But I want to add the workflow feature where we say, okay, pause, wait for the results for the previous one and then pipe it to the next one. So it's going to be more, again, we had students working on this. Again, if you can help out and contribute, that would be awesome. Is it possible to send, like, change periodically source IP from where the attack or discovery is happening? Let's say if I want to run like 10 modules at the same time and push that through the Tor network or some list of the SOC 5 servers, but some with some logic? Uh, you can use Docker. So I think that's my advice. So yeah. you just, uh, you, you uh, many dockers, you mean? Many dockers, yes. Okay. But, but that will slow down the, the Of discovery. course, but it depends where you run it. But actually, uh, the related question which a lot of people ask me is saying, how can I hide, how can I detect that the attacker is scanning me, how it's possible to hide? Because the attacker will put user agent the attacker in all the scans to help administrators to realize they're being scanned, right? But there, yes. we have a module which basically turns into a random user agent. So, which makes it very difficult to detect. <laughs> yes, but the idea is that uh, if you, uh, will it calculate or get the, consider the rate limit that's set up on the target service, not to abuse it, and if you're going through the different sources. Great question, yes, great. So, uh, there is no rate limit at the moment implemented, but it is in the works, right? There is currently uh, the rate limit feature which is being worked on by someone, yeah, by one of the contributors. Thank you. <laughs> oh, more, more questions. Thank you. Uh, 
tool to use the tool, say, for internal uh, needs, is there a way to, instead of having the modules enumerated in the command line, to have a class of modules? You can. That's what's yeah. called profile. You just create a text file, and in that text file, you put all the modules you want to do. You create, I don't know, your company name, abc.com, right. and you create a text file called abc.com.txt, put everything, all the modules you want in that there, in that file, and that's it. And then just say, scan abc.com. It's there. Yeah, yeah. It's thank done. you. Thanks. Not a question, just a remark. So Belgium has recently passed a legislation uh, which allows you to hack any website, any Belgian website, ethically, but you have the responsibility to report it. So you could use this also to, on a Belgian website to do experiments. So I was wondering if that was the small European country that did it. No, it wasn't. Uh, and I can give you a hint that the weather was much warmer than in Belgium. <laughs> It was smaller than Belgium, and uh, they had more sunshine. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Just um, regarding your OT networks, um, I know some of the concerns we have when trying to like use Nmap on an OT network, it can like kill the OT devices because they're so old or sensitive. Any experience, or what's what's the effect on running this on like an OT network? No problem whatsoever, because it's actually quite gentle. And we will slow it down even further using rate limiting as well. So it's just similar where people are just using a browser. Um, the main reason why well, a lot of people complain about it because a lot of websites, if you're using it for bug bounty, they actually detect many requests coming from the same IP address and then they start blocking. But I've used it internally on a uh, OT system which had uh, CCTV cameras and they had 40,000 cameras and it was absolutely fine. No, no negative effect on the switches or anything like that because uh, you know, it's a Python uh, request module and it was gentle. And, and we're going to make it even more gentle because we'll say, okay, here's the limit how many HTTP requests per second it can send. Can you talk real quick about what's keeping it from being released as a 1.0? Uh, right, Bec what's keeping it released because the actual the source code is written by students, and if you start reading the code, you realize that it can be improved a lot. <laughs> and it's, uh, that's, that's one of the problems. I would say, uh, and another one, I really want to make the web UI a bit better, so it, it can be used successfully in the enterprise with a web UI. I know some people are using it, and again, I'll give you an example. Out of the blue, I found out that one of the big four consultants is actually using this, to do some recon on the companies which are being acquired. I know that there's a cyber insurance company which is using it to validate the security posture of some of their customers because it's free and open source tool. That's and what they do so well, right? Uh, well, no, but they, no, they have a contract. They have a contract first, of course. They have a contract because they say, okay, what, how's your posture? We can validate it. We'll run the tool and see, uh, do you have uh, uh, vulnerable versions of, uh, um, move it transfer or Citrix or Apache or whatever, right? They can do that. Okay, one more question and don't forget to provide feedback. Thanks. Uh, one quick question. What is the UI built with? Uh, What's the tech stack for that? Uh, that's just Flask and uh, HTML and a little bit of JavaScript. So it's very rudimentary and we want to improve it. We want to look it really nice and slick and then uh, we can release it as version one and then I can proudly say that OWASP has its own fully featured vulnerability scanner. And this is, a, for those of you who attended uh, Brooks' keynote on day one, remember I said, okay, if you are a large enterprise and you can spend millions, right, there are tools for you in the commercial world, but this is for people who cannot afford it, or for smaller uh, you know, startups, say, well, how do we scan our network? How do we find out if we have any vulnerability? Yeah, that's free and open source, but everyone uses it. Big enterprises use it and small companies use it as well. Yeah, and pen testing companies use it as well. I see it. Pen test teams, red teams use it as well. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs>